reading these, I'm recognising um, what's been happening to Adam. <laughs> you, you, have you met Adam? You haven't no. met Adam? No. Okay, well, Adam, I gave birth to Adam. He's our son. Mm -hmm. And he's been in Europe all mm -hmm. of this time. And Adam, from a small child, was a very different child. And uh, he sought God with all of his heart. Mm -hmm. He's been through shit, absolutely. He's been down there on the street. He, he has seen all manner of evil. However, when I found uh, Yah, of course, it took him some time getting used to him. We had to send him back to Canada to get over himself, come to terms with it. And he, he came to terms, terms with it on the 7th of July, 2009, when we were in Uluru, taking the Kilver swine flu there to the Aborigines. I had now, to run him out in the middle of the desert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We him. told him he wasn't coming with us anymore. We're it's nice about it. Weren't going to put up with his shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're not coming. He tried way home. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've been now. Adam has been set upon all of his life mm -hmm. by forces that were obviously trying to destroy him. He's, he's been a diabetic type one since nine, um, but he's been very he's been um, very sensitive to the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. He can see, he feels, he senses. His judgment is usually spot on. He knows mm -hmm. when he's. But he is mentally ill. Isn't he? <laughs> I'm sort of psychiatrist, but yeah, what the shit? Oh well, yeah, well, you know, you've been, yeah, that's you and me and all of us sitting at the table. We're all mentally ill, okay. So I'm recognising uh, a lot of these things that have been coming against Adam, and while he's been with Claudia, the the one that's called. Um, he went on to get married, didn't he? Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, right. yeah. So they've been, to, and it's been a struggle, one thing after another, and oh, they're worn out, heartbroken through mm. calamities coming against them. Now, just before I found, we started reading this document. I finished with him. Yeah. Three, <laughs> three. Adam told me through the weekend he had a migraine for three days, and he was slowly getting through. Before that, like a few months ago, when he was in Amsterdam, and he's been suffering this for years because this is one of the demonic. Mm. is the shoulders. His shoulders literally just fall out, so they become like dislocated yeah. and pain. Can't move it, all, all kinds. And the neck. Um, and then the calamities. These are all, as these demons are being called up, they're describing these things. One of them, I think it was Onoskelis, was migraines. Another one, Asimodius, who is the demon of wrath. He, um, one of his roles is to set out and go after newly wed couples and to cause strife and to bring calamities against them so mm. they, they cannot know each other and to wear out the beauty of the virgins mm. through stress mm. and then estrange the heart of the virgin away from the husband. And and then mm. another part of his roles is to cause uh, men to stray after other mm. men's wives, that kind of thing. So all of these things, oh shit, no wonder Adam, because he, you know. Um, so last night we started listing. Now we're coming down to this point in time. Is that Sheba? Yeah. <laughs> we're coming down to this point in time where November the 30th has been declared the, the day of the cutoff. What is out of here? Um, and we've been telling the world, you, you know, you're in the judgment seat ever since we crossed over, this is the judgment, why shit is happening, it's the judgment, see, everything's being sorted. Um, <clears throat> now, of course, what happened <clears throat> and what the, the demons warned Solomon was that his kingdom would be taken away from him. He would be, he would turn, he would sin and his kingdom would be taken away from him mm -hmm. and when that happened, they would be loosed. He was constraining them. They had to work on the temple. Now, mm -hmm. so that they were actually constraining physical vessels of like earthenware jars. Yeah. And they said that when the he his kingdom would be overturned and the temple would be destroyed, and then they, because of the oh, and also named the king of the Medes and the Persia who would be doing it, and uh, they would take the earthenware jars and break them and they would be set free to roam the earth for a very long time mm. until the time, this is where they prophesy again, mm. um, of the one who has authority over them and they're identifying the Son of God stretched on the cross 
his number is 644, which is the name of mm. Emmanuel. And it even describes how he would cast them from a steep place under the water, which is what happened at Gadara, the, the, the legion. I am legion. Mm. And he cast them out of the swine herd into, well, what happened was it went from the man that they were occupying into the herd of swine and then they ran off the cliff mm. into the water. And then he got into trouble because the, the pig herders <laughs> lost their herd. <laughs> so it was prophesying uh, uh, of that time. But until that time, they'd be free. So that's what they did. That this this Asimodus is um, the god of wrath, stirs up war mm. between people. And so as he's calling them forth and aiming all of them, and, and Solomon admits, you know, I was astonished. And then another one proceeded um, uh, towards the end of we're getting through and I'm making this of all this and all the rest of it, getting through toward the end of it. Um, the Queen of the South, which is uh, the Queen of, uh, her name was Sheba, the Queen of Sheba, comes and by now, because he had this authority, the nation was at peace, actually the whole world, because that, that was the world, was at peace. There was no war, everybody was prosperous and happy, and there was peace. That's what's significant about his reign was the peace. It was because he had bound mm. all of the demonic beings that was had been influencing men before that. So what happens is uh, he comes to, uh, a, a, an old man comes in and he's pleading uh, with um, Solomon to make judgment he wants his son, who he says has been tormenting him day and night and harassing him and causing him grief, he wants his son to be judged and to, to die. So, like Solomon's listening to this and he goes, well, all right, I've heard your sort of story, I'm sending your son. And he says to the son, what's going on? Your father says this about you. And the son says, look, you know, would I dare? You know, I, I am constrained by piety. I wouldn't dare do what he's claiming. So Solomon's going, oh, all right, uh, well, calls in the father and he says, listen, you two make up your son's, you know, forgive your son, your, your son said he's sorry, just make it up and get on with your life kind of thing. And, and the old man says, no, I, I, I want justice, I want him to die. Well, he sees the first demon that was presented to him, uh, who, who's, you know, working on the temple, he starts sniggering. Mm. And so he gets his guards to take the two men out, clears the court, and says to, you know, like, why are you laughing at me? He says, I'm not laughing at you, O king. He says, I'm laughing at the old man because his son will be dead within three days. On the third day, his son will be dead. Mm. And then he'll be calling like a different tune. And so Solomon's going, oh, like, how does he know the future kind of thing? Okay, so now he calls the two back and says, you two go away, um, make up and come back and I'll send for you again. So, uh, what happened? He leaves at five days. He binds the demon and uh, leaves at five days and then he sends his servant to go and get the old man because now he's ready to deal with the situation and you know, he wants to find out. So the old man, he calls for the two of them to come. The old man comes in and he's been crying and he's in grief. And he goes, uh, like, where is your son? And he says, oh, King, he's been dead but two days. I have been sitting at his grave and crying. So anyway, that, and Solomon again says, he was astonished. <laughs> you know, it had come to pass and the demon had been speaking the truth and that kind of thing. So all throughout this whole thing is this, this understanding. But in between everyone that came forth, Solomon went back into the temple and praised God. You know, literally on his face, the God of the Most High, because he realized he had been given this authority, and so he was praising and thanking him uh, to use it in wisdom. Now, one of the seven spirits that was, it, it was, it was one female, if you like, but there were seven in the one. One of them, uh, you know, the first one was deception, and the next one was strife, jealousy, um, battle, uh, no, not that um, jealousy, but um, error. Error was number six. And the last one was called I am worst of all, which is the scripture. About seven demons, they come back worse than the first.
first time if they're cast mm. out and come back to find the house not swept clean. But number six was error. I'm the spirit of error. Now, error, when she identified herself, said to Solomon, because he did do this, I caused you to kill your brother when you became king. Right? That's the very first act that he did. He got rid of potential competition and all the rest of it in his older brother, who should have been the king. Mm. So error is saying, that was me. And uh, it, literally prophesying that I'm going to get you again. All right? So years go by and all the rest of it, and the whole world comes to worship Solomon because of his wisdom, his strength, and his, they recognize the authority and the peace that Israel enjoyed. Uh, now, skipping, moving along, there was one last thing, like Beelzebub, who was the prince of demons, said he had a child that was uh, like the child of the Red Sea. So Solomon says, well, bring him here, and, you know, what's his name? He said, I can't tell you his name. There is one spirit that will bring him to you, but I'm not going to tell you his name. I can't tell you his name, but like in time, this spirit, whose name was Epiphus, will bring him to you. So time goes by, he gets a letter from um, the ruler of Arabia. They've got a problem, they've got this demonic wind that whips up every morning and it's destructive and it kills people mm. and they know Solomon is wise and can deal with it. Can you please come and deal with this demonic wind? So he thinks about it for seven days and, and stuff's happening with the temple and that kind of thing. And then he sends a servant and he says, take this ring and he gives him instructions. Here's a flask, take it and go to them and capture the wind. You will know when you've got it, like you get the ring out and hold the flask and you will know when the spirit is in there because you'll feel the flask fill and then seal it with the ring, seal it and bring it back to me. Don't listen to any bribery, no. you know, riches and all that kind of thing. So that's what happens. The servant does that. Of course, the Arab people just give them gifts and honour and praise and they're so happy, these demons. He goes back. Now, the thing that bothered, this is towards the completion of the temple. There was a stone that, um, and it's the cornerstone that had to be put in place at the very last. But even with all the demons that he'd set to work and all the men, they didn't, they couldn't put the stone in place. And so they rejected it because they couldn't get it into position. And, and it bothered him because, you know, this is the house of God, he's building, and he can't get it there. So, all right, he sent for the, um, the wind. Now, the wind, its name was Epiphus, the one that Beelzebub had mm. told him. So he, he identifies as Epiphus and all the rest of it. And um, his role was to um, st stir up this wind and destroy it. Now, th two days ago, we'd been sent, did you hear about in Northern Territory in the middle of September, about those fire tornadoes? Mm -hmm. In Okay, so we, we're looking at that yeah. in the middle of nowhere that was captured. And we had driven past there in 2009, Mount Connor. Yeah. So we're looking at this. And then um, one of the demons... Um, I, 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 you know, forget the name, but it was something like Fire Dragon, something like that. And its purpose was to cause a fire storm and consume, like burn down homesteads, yeah. and, and it could it could ignite and burn anyway, just like this yeah. that we saw. Okay, um, so uh, um, Solomon has this conversation with Epiphus, and uh, he says, "Well, can you?" Help me get the. Can you lift the the cornerstone? And the prophet says, "Yes, I can do that." And I'll go and get the child of the Red Sea. This is the child of Beelzebub. The Beelzebub said only a prophet can go call him. So he returns with the child of the Red Sea. Now again, they prophesy that the only one is the one whose name is six four four and will be stretched on the cross. The only so uh, now what. Solomon does is that he bound them and sealed them and then um, he put the flask underneath the, the cornerstone and then the wind and the child from the Red Sea, which was, it, it said that it had been there from the crossing over of Israel at the time of Moses. Mm. Yeah, of course it was, pushing back the Red Sea. So here it was. And they 
lifted and placed the cornerstone in position and he bound them there as two pillars, like these pillars of wind, and that's where he bound and sealed them. They had to remain. But they prophesied to him that the cornerstone would remain until the end of the world. Mm. Okay. So moving right along, well, it was, I don't know how many years later, but what, what happened, um, Solomon's now accumulating wives all over the place. He ended up having 700 wives and 300 concubines. So he's got uh, amassing wives. And there was a, a Shumanite woman that he saw, and his words, I fell violently in love with. At the ballet dancer. <laughs> <laughs> he, it was, he was on travels, and he fell violently in love with this Shulamite woman. And that, that's the one in the Beloved, the Song of Solomon, I'm pretty sure. But he asked permission for her, and, and they said, well, no. You know, you, well, you can, you can have her if you worship our gods. Mm -hmm. And he says, no, I'm not going to go. You know, I worship the God of Israel, I'm not going to go and all the rest of it. So he resisted twice, and he resisted all along. However, the Shulamite woman came to him, and, you know, she's, he's in love, violently in love with her. And um, so she says to him, well, you know, just crush these five locusts, which he did. He crushed the locusts. Well, that was a sacrifice to five of their gods. The first one was Moloch. And as soon as he did that, he, in his own words, the Spirit of God left me. And he became a weakened man who could hardly string two words together. And he ended up building, he ended up building um, temples to Moloch and all the gods of the Shulamite mm -hmm. woman. And that's how and why suddenly he's lost his authority. And uh, the temple ends up being destroyed, and sure enough, the kings of uh, Persia and the Medes were the ones and destroyed the temple. And they did. They took all of the flasks and they broke them. So the demonic realm now escaped, and they said they would roam around the earth mm -hmm. until the time of the cross that they were mm -hmm. talking about. All right. So... Um, we get down to the cross, where that's exactly what happened. The whole demonic, well, the, what what happened was he cast out legion. That was the one in the, um, the Gadara, and they're in the scene, all the rest of it. And when he said, "One greater than Solomon is here," meaning the authority. Hello, it's me. Mm. Don't need a ring. And he would cast out demons. They had nothing in him. See, a demon can occupy a legal right mm. if a vessel opens a door by way of, as the demons themselves um, say, that, um, you know, you have no business turning a foot toward me. In other words, keeping a straight and narrow way, don't be persuaded. It, and it was error who, who was in the Shulamite woman that caused him to err when he crushed the five locusts. And she'd already prophesied she was going to get him again. Mm. So that's how the kingdom fell. They said that your kingdom will be taken away from you and given to a servant. So at the cross, it was all de dealt with. Now what the cross did, it opened, it, it, it paved the way for him to come back again now. Mm. Okay? They were bound at the cross and as Jesus, he gave the keys of the kingdom to his disciples, his followers. Now, that, those keys to the kingdom was the authority that Solomon had to bind. Whatever you bind on heaven, whatever you bind on the earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on the earth will be loosed. So giving you authority, they're the keys of the kingdom. Now, in reading all of this, now, the, the, the church knows about this, the, the organized church at large, knows about it, whatever you find in. They're one of the very first things that I learned becoming a Christian, not knowing who I was and all the rest of it, mm. was this binding and loosing. So I immediately went to work. And whenever there was sh shit happening, you know, like hatred, jealousy, uh, all this stuff that you can feel coming no. against you in people, bind it. 
and loose the opposite. So I began operating in that authority. Well, that authority he gave to all of his church, but what happened, and the demons actually prophesied this as well, they said that even if, if a Roman, now a Roman was a Gentile, that was the Gentile nation that he said, don't go to Rome, do not go to the Gentiles. He's talking about Rome. It was, we were dealing with Israel. So the, the demon said, if even a Roman says this, and, and, and says like Raphael, bind, you know, whatever its name is, I'm imprisoned, I'm bound. He says, don't go to Rome. So what happens? Peter, the fuckwit, goes to Rome before Paul. Paul was a devil. He fronted up 15, 20 years after. He didn't know Jesus. And he was teaching perversions, the gospel of grace and all the rest of it. That, you know, people sit back on their backsides today and say, oh, I'm saved. Jesus saved me. No, it's the way, the truth, and the life. This is the way you're going to live to, you know, make it. So Peter goes to Rome and he gives them the keys to the kingdom. So what has happened is that Rome has become the beast. They have suppressed all of the knowledge where people can enter into lives and they have used the keys of the kingdom for their own evil gain. They know how to summon, and this is what they've been operating in, summoning the demonic world, and the demonic world is bound to perform what it is the one who summoned them. They weren't binding them, they were, they were commanding them to do that. So that's why the, the Vatican has all the wealth, it has stolen the wealth of the entire world. Mm. It, it's, its gold vaults are actually under the, um, the runway of, uh, I think it's Lucerne, there's an airport in Lucerne, that's where they hide, have hidden all of their gold. And that came about by a blog that I read just recently where a woman, a teacher in Kelowna, no, it wasn't a woman, it was a man, retired teacher, one of his students came back, and this is fairly recently, and he said, look, I've just got to tell you this because it's all current news nowadays. This is what this student told me. He'd been a buyer for the Vatican, and he, he described where it was, and he worked alone until it came to actually shifting the gold. Mm -hmm. But everything was done in secrecy. He, he, what he describes, you know, what the room looked like that he worked in underneath the tarmac mm -hmm. and the vaults, all that kind of thing. And um, he'd been able to retire so young because he made uh, one tenth of one percent on all of the transactions as the buyer for the Vatican. And I guess he was confessing. Mm -hmm to his old teacher, so she just threw that, he just threw that in at the blog, you know, this is what I know. Um, so that's how this evil rage, now, all of the demonic, their, their, their roles, as I'm reading them last night, they're all operating in the, um, the British royal family. The Rothschilds at the top of the heap, he would be Beelzebub, the, the, the head demon. Um, the Vatican. Israel, the leaders of Israel, all of the Western nations. You can see their behavior. And the USA, of course, is, mm. is, a, is just a bigger Israel. It's a Jewish state. They own every single you know, corporation, politician in the USA. That's, that's fact now. So you can see how all of this, this demonic realm has been in and operating through the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not. Later, after uh, the diaspora and the, you know, the destruction of the temple, which again was the, these demons gone to Rome and got Rome to destroy the temple to Yahweh, because when it was rebuilt, it was the temple of Yahweh, that's what he said, my father's house. For that, it was Solomon's temple, they destroyed Solomon's temple. Um, the, because all souls reincarnate, then the ones that are alive then are all back now, gathered on the earth. And so they are once again the vessel for these demonic entities that have been operating in. Now, they've been able to operate that way because the, 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 the Western Christian church, the church that was given the keys, gave it away to the Gentile nation, they shouldn't, Rome, and Rome became, has been the beast all along. I mean, Joel could tell you some of that. It's just horrifying. So you've got, now, it has been the plan of the Jews all along is to rule the world as God's chosen people. That's why 
you know, we are, we are the chosen people of God. Well, they're not. They're the false Jews. They call themselves Jews. They're not because they are the actually Khazarian Jew. They're Mongolian. Mm. They're Mongolian. The, the Jews were spread throughout. You know, they were in Israel with the tribes spread throughout the ten nations of Europe and uh, um, England, Scotland and Ireland. That's how the branch Mary was English. That's what when he saw it, you know, she's mm. tall and she's fair skinned. Um, uh, English joins the branch, the two branches come together because Joseph ben Jacob Israel was already in Jerusalem. So the two branches join together as the most royal couple to bring forth the Christ child, round one and round two. So anyway, these, de this demonic, um, these demons have been operating in the current world leaders until last night. When, um, because it's all about the timing, the timing. Now they've been warned, he's warned them well, literally since he's been on the internet. Mm. This is where we're heading, the, the judgment. It's a coming freight train. I'm here, you know, this is all the evidence. And of course, he's rejected. We mm. both rejected, it's all part of the prophecy. The ones that are accepted, <laughs> like the dude in Siberia. <laughs> just, he's got thousands of followers. He dresses in a white robe. But comes it's, um, comes Desarian or something. Desarian or whatever, yeah. he's in Siberia. He came down and spoke for what ten minutes, uh, like like uh, people came from all over the world to hear his ten minutes as he floated down the mountain in his white, you know, sits on his throne with a, a red velvet umbrella over and and looking all very Jesus-like, but like you, <laughs> yeah. you know, the beard and you know, big hulk of a guy sits there and speaks in Russian for about ten minutes and talks about UFOs and the end of the world and. <laughs> That's it. Floats back up his mountain. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you get thousands of followers. <laughs> so people come and sit, and sit there and listen to him. Mm. Oh yeah, they came from all over yeah. the world for the, a, a pilgrimage, the and yeah. they live there with him in this Thousand. village. It's a beautiful place. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but told the wind. Anyway, a few Siberian tigers. So he, <laughs> so he, you know, I mean, it's amazing because you're asking me you know, this guy, and he's saying, like, he's got thousands of followers, and that's all he, he speaks bullshit. In, in 10 minutes, and he spent his entire life proving everything, measuring the earth, you know, the thousands, all this, to, to prove to this generation, and still, but still, you're glad, okay? Well, it's I all, so. Yeah, you would be rejected. <laughs> okay, so moving right along, we get down to last night, as I'm reading, I'm thinking, ah. Uh, now, yesterday, Yah had read it for the first time as well, he, he read it all the way through, and what it is, is it's all about the exposure. Once the angelic realm put in front of you, like he'll come down and there'll be something on his screen that he, he hasn't put there. Mm. It's a video that he's supposed to watch, okay. So this thing comes up because now's the time. So okay, all oh, right, there has been nobody with the authority since the cross to get rid of the demonic realm, to take authority over it all. And the church has fallen down. It's been hijacked by the Jews who are Jews and not, and everybody's in chaos all over the place. And the Jews are having their way, and their plan. And it, um, uh, as a modus, said that he would destroy the world. He, he said to Solomon, "I will destroy you, and then I will destroy the world." Well, that's where they've been heading. Their plan has been to destroy mm. this planet. World War Three, nuclear war. Mm. That's been their plan. Okay, so last night, yeah, I read it yesterday, and then then I start reading it for the first time, and I'm I'm going, oh, this is the hour. And I just realised I'm the seventh angel in the Revelation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only one cover. <laughs> anyway, um, so Adam gets online. This is all you know. He comes on Skype. He's woken up for the day because he's in Poland and all the rest of it. Adam, the one who's been set upon, and the one that we said, what, 12 weeks ago, you're it, you're God. <laughs> he goes, Son of God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Son of. Yeah, you're, you're it. <laughs> oh, okay, anyway. Um, so now he had already read this document sometime. He told us about it in August when they were planning to blow up the Olympics. That was mm. their plan. They'd planned everything. But We've been saying it won't happen, we've already crossed over, so all their efforts were foul. So 
And that's when the Alien and Galactic Federation was supposed to show up at all. Yeah, that was a big letdown for that. For that <laughs> oh, yeah, following, they lost a lot it? of followers there, didn't they? Yeah. So last night, and I said, okay, Adam, read this. And he goes, hmm, I have. Da -da 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 -da. Anyway, I'm just throwing bits and pieces in. He says, okay, what do we need to do? So I said, what? <laughs> All right, you're it. He, uh, he's already made him king of Europe. Mm. You know, Adam's king of Europe. Um, you have genetically, he is. He is, yeah. He is the actual king of mm. Mm. That kind of king, yeah. For, now, so he said, okay, you, you have the authority. You, you deal with it. They're the whole ball of wax. So, um, now, as, as soon as I said that, and um, now, as I said before, Adam's been really super sensitive. He, he knows, he's had this amazing, really dance, I suppose, as they've been watching him, they've been following him, they've been watching him, just knowing who he is, because we're now to the world, he's the one. <laughs> Everybody's been, the Illuminati have been waiting for, see, they, they've been waiting for Adam to return, believing that Adam would serve them. Mm. So we announced to the world that Adam was the one that they were expecting, and by the way, Adam chooses to serve <laughs> Yahweh, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, tough titties. Um, <laughs> so last night... they all over the city. They, oh, they have, seen, ever since the end of the country, but they can't... Yeah. See, he, he, he actually understood from a very young age that he's watched, he's sent, he knows it, and oh, well, I'll tell you what happened when we were in Fiji. But anyway, they can watch him, but they can't kill him. They have tried, mm. just like I've told you know, they've tried several occasions, but they can't. So now all they can do is okay, watch every move, listen to everything we say. That's why everything is public. <laughs> yeah. Don't try it. Um, so last night, Adam. Even as I'm typing, I'm reading and I'm typing the name of the demon, this is the angel. And he, he just went through every single one of them. And then it got to the point where, where I mean, he was hearing literally this conversation. He said, he had to do this from an internet cafe. Um, he's hearing this conversation in his head as the angels are saying to him, that one's dealt with, it. We went with that one, did it, did it, did it. Go over. They were waiting. Mm. We're waiting because time is running out. Um, so we went through the entire list, and then the final one was Bezel Love, the Prince of Demons, and then it was done, gone. But while this was happening, when, when he first started, he could feel, he said, um, a fire started with inside of him. I said, well, that's, that's the strength, that's going to be the strength too. And then as he was going through, he started to get weakened, and I said, well, ask Michael to, to strengthen you, and I'm, you know, you, you've got to be there to strengthen you. He He's sitting feeling, here, here in the middle of an internet cafe. <laughs> <people are> <laughs> Now, yeah, I had started to feel sick before all of this. I, I had to go to the bathroom several times. I was literally having, you know, diarrhea. Mm. <laughs> and uh, so the, uh, now what was interesting was the night before, Adam came on at about 8.30, it was Tuesday night, and he said, I sense something major happening. What's going on? And all was quiet on this front. We had a... The cost lottery. We just bought a cost lottery ticket. The, the lottery ticket for the hundred million. We had a mm -hmm. ticket in that, you know. So, well, it's all quiet mm -hmm. here. This is happening in a few minutes. So, okay. But of course, we didn't win it naturally. Um, so he, it, it, it was this great build up, and then of course, that, you know, yeah, I found the document yesterday. So we're into it last night. This is it. And. He, and then he said, okay, it's um, 1338 here, I'm in Poznan, uh, or, so in other words, do the stars. So yeah, I did the stars, and it was amazing what the stars were saying. First of all, what, what, it was 16 and 17, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And it was all about, um, it was about virtue, because I, I said to Adam, and this is the thing about the, the Christ, it's the first time, it can only be that vessel of virtue, you know, um, pious righteousness, righteousness and virtue, so that the enemy does not have anything in you. That's why I said, you know, the enemy has nothing in me, because there's no part, like he was a clean mm -hmm. vessel. So I said to Adam, it can only be, you know, that, that vessel, that is, is that. And the stars were, were um, well doer, well done, virtue. It went on and on and on about the one who had performed this. Um, 
it, you know, the, the duration, the minutes, there were about six different numbers all around this time. Of, it was all about what he had done. And then this morning he, he comes and we were doing numbers again over this time now, this afternoon at the house, and it was all about utter destruction. Well, that's right. The first thing about the stars last night were severing, departure, away, um, like getting rid of. And then it was, today it was Permanent. like, permanently, everlasting. Because what he did was that when he, see, before they were bound, um, what, what's his, uh, bound them, but when the Christ returns, it's judgment. And the next step is off the earth. They have to go off the earth. So not even to be bound here anymore, but off. So that's what they're all in. <gasps> so last night, Adam told their angels. Now, there's the scriptures about the angels are the reapers. The scriptures that uh, he, he, he commanded them but to. But the demons are witnesses. Yes. Yeah, the demons are the witnesses. So if you can get your head in that, that uh, say, from a creative force that comes into being and then the people are what they are, and all these demons are our part of their culture and it's angels and angels are proven quite easily by these huge monuments where the thousand ton blocks have been lifted up and put in yeah. certain positions all around the world. Mm. Right? So um, I look at all this and say, okay, I can see where man has been bullshitted into thinking this certain way they are. And naturally, like a yobbo in a pub, all he wants to do is watch the horse races. Mm. Right? They don't want to know about this bullshit I'm talking about in their mind. So the reality is that's what we're dealing with. Then and now is an angelic demonic force that is in a lock in a battle. Now, you've got all these numbers that come up from Solomon 900 BC talking about Jesus Christ dying on the cross. Go back to 4000 BC, the Hindi talk about Jesus Christ dying on the cross. Go back a thousand years, Hindis are talking about he'll be back, Yahweh, Jehovah, mm. the Lord, he'll be back and be recognized in 2012. That was a thousand years ago, prophecy mm. out of the Hindi. And then you've got other prophecies of Noah going to Sri Lanka. All these yeah. places in these prophecies I've been to. Mm. Just happen to stagger along and they're down in. That's just at the right place and right time. So what we're dealing with today is a series of the Word Emmanuel. Okay, it's got a value of 644. We're outside of 644. Mm, that's what's on the over. Like Did you see the orb yet? Yeah. Did you see the orb? I haven't shown you. Oh. I was telling him about it before. Yeah. That's Five times brighter than, say, uh, yeah. any luminary you would see yeah. up there, like Venus, for example. And it's and moving in a straight line, a straight really line, fast. Moving, quite fast. Mm -hmm. Northwest so to southeast. So maybe take five minutes to go from there to the other side, mm -hmm. huh? and northwest to southeast. Okay. But they're talking about the Emmanuel, being God with us. It means God with us in Greek. And the value of 644 and the value of the name in Greek geometria, which I can explain to you if you don't know. But in any case, it's 6.44. At 6.44, this thing happens. Right? Okay, now why? So let's go to, from Gargar land, the mental asylum, into you and I. So I was 8,880 days old when my daughter was born in Port Alberni, Canada, during the eight, eight, eight minutes of sunlight, the sunset, and she was conceived 280 days earlier. Very funny situation. My wife said to me, she didn't want to get a job, right? Lazy bastard, right? She said, married ladies don't work and I'm a married lady. I said, you ain't no fucking lady. Right? Get in there, you're gonna root her, right? muck her up. <laughs> At that moment, <laughs> Jupiter was above for 888 minutes and it is 88,800 miles across. Right? The baby that's born when I'm 8880 days old is the value of Matthew 123, 123 talks about the Emmanuel name of Jesus. God in the flesh. It's only found once in the world. So now we're starting to talk to a reality of what I have been doing physically and check the records in the hospital. It's all real. Right? All these numbers pertaining to my family are so wonderfully compacted together in a mathematical formula that Einstein would be very impressed indeed because there's no answer to it. It's, mm. it's, just, it's obvious. No, it's in. Right? That's how I've been able to do it. Right? And that's just a tip of the surface, right? It goes, goes together. It's like a bloody iceberg under the under the, the uh, water, the information. So this is really what this Solomon has done inadvertently talking about the, the Emmanuel prophecy. Now here we've got that from the book of Isaiah. 
all right, which is Emmanuel. It talks about Emmanuel as well, with spelt with an I, however. So, the Emmanuel prophecy we now see in the New Testament, Jesus speaking, eight, eight, uh, rather the record keepers keep, uh, talking about the genetics of Jesus, how it comes down from Adam and so forth. But in that verse where he's Emmanuel, it is 123, Matthew, and has a value of 8880. So then we go back in mind. Sunrise to moonrise, 880 minutes, 88 minutes wrong. Right? We've got my brother, 8.88 years old. My child who got murdered, right? <clears throat> Trinity, who was the daughter of Mary Magdalene, 100% proof on that, her daughter is Rihanna, Rad's for daughter. Right? Now, her daughter is going to be 8.888 years old when I am 69. Right? And she's born 888 weeks after the mother of the baby that got murdered, uh, her and I got married. It's all this, and that's just so it becomes a mathematical wonder that it is totally mind-blowing and proves it 100%. I just sit back and say, well, I'm fine, yeah. no? Don't try and ask my because they've got your fucking bed. I don't even think about it. So that's the whole idea of them presenting to the world. You think you're right with your religion? You're going to tell God that you're right, your religion where you can behead people and cut their arms off? That's for God? Because you're the one to get your fat arm cut off. Mm. So we put the, the fear of God into these silly bars because it's, it's rippling through the world due to the internet right? and prophecy. Mm. And at the moment, they're supposed, we're supposed to be being bombarded by asteroids from space, trillions and trillions and trillions of them, dragged behind this Nibiru thing that's coming back and it's supposed to have seven planets with it. We've seen it. Right? So this is what's supposed to be happening. Where are all these assholes? Right? They're on the ground. It's $46 trillion building these things. Right? So they're underground. I said to Obama, you go underground, they're going to kill you. And they'll kill you in a, not a very nice way because we're dealing with Lucifer here. Yeah. Satan demands yeah, fear worried. and death and terror. So they, I said, you go underground, they'll burn your, your children alive and before you, and then they'll do your wife, and then they'll do you yeah. in the most horrible way. That's when you get right down to Denver Airport, right down the bottom. Because his eyewitnesses have come out of there, they're not, they quit, they're not going back. And so yeah. they accidentally went in there and found Horror out what's going show. on. Mm -hmm. Press the elevator button and went too far, I opened up all this horror show, right? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Now, yeah, up and left. now it, right. it's interesting because the demon that presented itself without a head, was headless, mm. was called Envy. And he roamed, the, and you know, so Solomon was looking and saying, well, you know, how, how do you see kind of thing? He says, I don't see, I feel. You, you feel, and he roams the earth looking for a head. So he, he severs people's heads. Well, the USA is filled with guillotines in these FEMA camps, and yeah. you've got beheading happening. What's happened? No, oh, yeah. It's happened all the time. people went missing from Katrina. Yeah. No one's talking about what happened to them. Well, they got taken to FEMA camps. Yeah. At the end of it, they're empty. Sacrifice a lot. That's what they do. So, this is a, a horrid, terrible religion that, that they think they're doing these evil things for Satan, that they can actually defeat God. And therefore, we can kill someone and get away with it. Well, you think you are, but they're not. No, no. What you're doing is the angel takes over, looks exactly yeah. like you, they get beheaded, and the person is already gone. Mm. The soul is already gone. So, this is the, the kind of thing I've been manoeuvring around, and every now and then, bang, there it is, there's, there's the answer. Mm. At the same moment, moments later, the bloody thing goes over the top here, which is a marvelous thing to see. Yeah. And uh, at 644. Right, so I then go from there, working out other relationships of my wives and how they all come together. And uh, it is extraordinary. Every one of them is a bloody demon. I can't even go into the details. I'm just so sad and hurtful and horrible of the things that these guys did. But you proved today that Ireland is definitely Jezebel. Yeah, I can. Well, there'll be someone. So, uh, the uh, Essenes and the Hindus, they all believe in reincarnation. Mm. But it's slowly been pushed out of the Hindus right, by the Buddhists going in, trying to take it over. And plus they've been so many Buddhists. Oh, yeah, no, the Buddhists, Buddhists do believe in reincarnation, but yeah, they're, they're no. slightly different. No, uh, but again, uh, true Hindu, like Raj, the holy man, was telling us that um, true holy man Hindu, which is the pure... All of us really resent Buddhism. Buddhism is like the schism yeah. that's leading people away from the truth. Mm. 
Um, and now a lot of Hindu people don't believe in reincarnation for one reason or another. Um, and that's probably oh, due to a lot of Christian influence uh, too, because they have Christian the information. Don't live, you're going to be with Jesus. Uh, uh, the the information's been yeah. held back from them because of the book they're reading. It's been manipulated. It's taken well, I'd like to say though, Raj, in, uh, he was a uh, man who worked on the gate. And uh, he's got about 60 cents an hour or something. Right? Mm. And he's a holy man from the yes. Hindu religion. And an angel told him to go down the south. So he comes down and he studies us for three days because he had a bit of spare time because he'd have a bit of gate. And uh, he concluded that uh, because they've got the lines on the face and this. And by the way, every time a Hindu meets a man, they always take them with the greatest of curses because mm. it just might be God. Yeah. Right? That's what they believe. Right? Mm. So that's very nice. So he concludes that I'm in. So I'm oh, fair enough, I'm doing all this stuff. But then he wants to tell everybody, no worries, right? We go to one of the meetings, he's here plucking on his little guitar thing, oh. Bella like her, whatever it is. He's going, yeah, I'm doing all the chants they carry on. Oh, yeah. oh, the keyboard and the, the. Oh, yeah. it's, no, that was a. Was there a plucking thing? Oh, I forget what they call it. Harmonium? No. Oh, maybe it was. Oh, I forget. All right. Now, from a native's point of view, holy man, he has met the Creator. Mm. So you think, how would the holy man who has met the Creator, the first one in billions, to see the Creator himself? What would you think he would say? Can you buy me one of those banjo things? <laughs> 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 he wanted to put the box so that he could worship. You can worship better than that. As I'm standing before you, fuck with. <laughs> You're going to go plumping away to God, right? Aren't you? You're supposed to meet him. Yeah. Well, that's how it works. He's here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> then he's got, I've got a photograph of him. It's not going to put on the internet. Oh, it, that was more important than announcing the world the other way. Totally. Talk about it. Well, can you send me but that's the kind of thing you're up against. See, it's just people aren't real. They, I, I don't know what it is. He's, he's, he's a man, a holy man in that opportunity. He did not behave, but I thought, I'll just sit back. I'm not sure. I'm waiting for him. What goes down is something totally blows my mind. Well, 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 he had all of the right teaching and he had it and his heart was to live the way. However, they just don't react the way that, uh, well, they need to, really, because it's, it's, it sets the people free. Yeah. We're talking about, you know, walking in and setting people free from a whole bunch of mm. stuff that has constrained them, mm. that their soul cannot grow because of the oppression that um, all of this religion, religious dogma has dumped on them when that's all over, over, it got you here. Hello, you, we're here now. It's time to have fun, really. You know, kingdom of heaven, yeah. paradise, it's not about having fun. Earth, it? <laughs> and you don't take your Bible or your holy book with you into heaven, do you? I'll tell you something, another <laughs> thing that blew my mind. There's a guy in Geelong and Michelle, who is Mary Mack, I know that about it. We go and see him because he's uh, a Freemason, he's a minister of the church, and he does laying on of hands and you can feel and you can tell who you were in past life and all this kind of stuff. So they do, they do Michelle and he comes up with Mary Magdalene. Got it right. That's good, yeah. How the fuck do you do that? Just by moving the hands and touching the forehead and that. He doesn't know. What'd you come up with? Oh, well, Jesus. Good one. At that moment, I thought he was going to run up and down the street shouting his fucking lungs yeah. out. No. No. <laughs> How do you know? Yeah. The demon stops him because they got the demon of the church. Mm. For a moment, he's excited. When yeah. So, the demonic world, of course, there is. It's a spiritual world. We find out with a bullet through your head. Mm. Oh, shit, that wasn't a smart thing to do. Well, you're going to back some. And you're born to the earth again. That's what born again is. Yeah. So it's all this fantastic stuff that uh, is leading up to whether it's believable or not. Uh, this is what they thought in those days, and this is what Solomon said. Right? This is what the Hindus believed 4,000 years ago, and this is what they said. Mm. 4,000 BC or something. Right? That's a huge, huge amount of time. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> well, it's 2,000 years before I died. Mm. Yeah. That's right, new radar system. Mm. People are hugely distracted. Yeah. Yeah. Hugely distracted. They've got yeah. no faith, no belief system. Well, that, well that's exactly the, the prophecy too. Will I find faith on the earth when I get back? Well, he hasn't, you know, until I phoned him. No. Okay. 
Yeah, no, I found People who think they've got faith, it just falls no. apart under the slightest pressure of collapses. Well, there's too much on TV, you see, because your mind can go down so many rabbit holes. Mm. Maybe it's a year or that. Maybe it's this, maybe that. Maybe yeah. Yeah. Jesus, okay, give us a go. And that's how the Jews do it. Mm. Well, owning the mass media, owning all the businesses, how they manufacture money out of nothing, mm. control all the money out of America, mm. have bought up with everything you could possibly think of, every war machine yeah. there is, and therefore they go to war because you're a straw man, they want you dead. Mm. Because they're betting on you to be killed in the war. And they're going to put you up front like David did with the, the husband of Bathsheba. Mm. Did you get rid of him? Mm. Second yeah, the same yeah. The people are all teetering too on the you know, the belief system of of this and that and money and security and all that sort of stuff mm. that's just been pulled away from under them mm. everywhere. So they just people just don't know. Yeah, where to go, what to do, they grasp onto anything. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, uh, as people become more and more desperate in their yeah. own personal circumstances, the, the goal is that they'll be seeking the truth. Now, you've got to be... I don't know, I think a lot of people become more desperate with just crazy things and go the other way. Can do. Yeah. All the above, yeah. So they've just got no, um, yeah, just... They just don't know where to go, so well, they'll, they'll resort, they'll go the other no, way. No, you, you are right, because it's actually already determined yeah. who will yeah. who will get there and who won't. Mm. That's what the revelation Last is all about. Yeah. Um, that's what the revelation is all about, and Papa Daniel. Yeah. Like, let the wicked continue to be wicked, let the holy continue to be holy. Yeah. So you've got these camps that are already back, and that's why you can't... You can't proselytise anybody, yeah. or you, you can present them. And yeah. he's always said, our own will recognise us. That's it. Yeah. Stop trying to convince anybody. And it's not that many of us. No, no. There's, only, there's only the few. Yeah, the very, very few. Well, that's all you need. When, um, all you need. It, it, if you think of it, it, think of it in the context of Noah. Or one speck of cancer. Where is the cancer? Hmm. Right, in, the, in the body of evil. So therefore, uh, they're going to have to stamp it out. Okay. Try so, many times. so that's why we've got um, the marriage that brought forth that his father mm. is the direct line of the kings of uh, uh, Switzerland. And as a matter of fact, the government always want to know where he was, what he's doing. And so, so we're heading up with Adam, and now the father has got cancer. I already told him how to cure the cancer. Mm. One listen. He's that type of guy. Yeah. But so as Adam, so they know who is the, uh, the actual king. They know I'm the actual king, mm. not only that, but mm. the Lord Himself. So they are very, very uh, dubious mm. of doing anything, keeping a bloody eye on him. So everywhere he goes, there's people watching him. So this is what they do. Mm. But everyone knows. Everyone, all, all, all of the ones that need to know know. They know what's happening, what's going down, and. and Having that knowledge, you know, looking around, you see people you know and friends, and they can just look at what's happening in their lives and that, and they're just totally lost. Mm. Well, I don't blame them because the food's poisoned, the mm. mind is full of junk. Yeah, but it's, it's so it's happening so quickly. It's, it's really mm. sort of the quickening. Well, well, it has to be because we, we've we've crossed over, so yeah. it, we're in the threshing floor, uh, and I mean, if you think of it in terms of. We've crossed over, we're back in the north side. They're not talking back because it's, you know, it's happening, mm. you know, in a few, you know, well, we're already there. So you're already safe, you're already over yeah. the finishing line. That's why he said it's Jesus, unless those days are shortened, there'll yeah. be no flesh left to save because their plan was to kill everybody with New World War Three. Mm. They tried to start it at least five years ago with Iran. Mm. They tried again in 2009, but stuff happened, didn't it? Mm. They were constrained by the angels. Um, there always be a balance, there'll always be a balance there. And you don't want to be like that dude in Russia up on the mountain, the white thing with all those. No way, you're doing this thing here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he wants a hair. <laughs> you got the hair more wrapped up in my hair. hair. <laughs> She's like a hair, She's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody energy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got we've got bikes now, so <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but I mean it's the greatest the greatest from what a better word weapon to use against them ever. Well you see the The hordes the hordes aren't gonna come. No. Oh no. The worshippers aren't gonna be coming out in the street and that they're not. No. no. I'm here to tell you that. I don't want it. Yeah. I don't want it. I really don't. But 
the reality is that it is changing to the better. Rapidly, by this. By this. I mean, that thing I showed you with Obama, yeah. you know, about this radiation and mm. asteroids hits, all of that. Werner von Braun, a German Nazi, like Hitler, good man. Right? They didn't burn like the Jews, they should have. But they didn't. And so I'm a bit fucking annoyed with Hitler. He's been accused of doing it, why don't you fucking do it and get rid of them then? <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, Werner von Braun, he's on his deathbed, he says, and this lady was interviewing him. Oh, she was his aide. She was his aide for a long time. Yeah. And um, she wrote the story about what he said. And he said the last card is going to be the alien card. The what? The alien, alien, alien card. card. Oh, right, yeah. Stage and then alien. Then they have all this disarray, yeah. and then they're going to swoop in like Popalon Cassidy, and they're going to save the world from the aliens. No. This is what they're trying to promote. And I said to you how they got the first alien yeah. with the two run into each other in the yeah. silly bastards, right, at 100,000 feet, and one spirals. I spoke to the guy, I said, I seen them. He you know, drew me ice cream. Fuck me. <laughs> 33 degrees, Freemason in Roswell, New Mexico. Mm. <laughs> Latitude, however, is Messiah. <laughs> That's where I was. Mm. <laughs> Eileen, first wife. Latitude, Messiah. Huh? Then you go from where I was born to where she was born. That distance is 11822, and that's the stone the bill's rejected mm. and it's become the head of the corner, that's in kilometres. Then you go down to Michelle, where I was with her for 13.31 years. That distance is 777.7 kilometres. Then you go to three sides, it's 1471, and that is a baguette tree of children. Now, reluctant witness, reluctant witness, all of them are reluctant witnesses. So what I do is use them as a negative guy account. Would you like to do this on this week again? No, no, no. Ah, we're going. Right? <laughs> that type of thing. Mm. I, I used Pauline, I played it like a, like a, a pamphlet all down through Mexico and that kind of thing. And she wasn't going, right? I said, right, get the fuck out. Pulled up at, at uh, I think it was, uh, uh, where's it? Mutual of Omaha. That's right, New Omaha. She's bitching, 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 doing it all the way. Right? Seeing this magnificent sights all the way down. And there's always miraculous stuff happening the way. Didn't nothing to her. So we go to, to uh, Omaha International Airport. Pull it. Get the fuck out. Got seven grand for this, three and a half grand. Get yourself a ticket, fuck off, take it. Went out in the car caravan in the back, got the suitcases out, slammed the door, got the camera back in. So she's got well, this big eye as well. <clears throat> so I thought, well, I'll give one more chance. If she's not there, I'll keep going. If she is there, I'll give her a warning. Still standing there, petrified, tear it, crying her eyes at her. I said, shut the fuck up, get in the car and don't say nothing. And we're going Suddenly, to, so and sudden. I said, we're going to Gulf Breeze, Florida. Why? Because the Strategic Air Command had said that Jesus is coming back to Gulf Breeze, Florida on board a UFO. And seven people went AWOL. Can you it's imagine seven it's top security people mm. in Belgium going AWOL and be able to fly on a plane, mm. and get back into the United States, and then do all the things they want to do without getting arrested? Mm. It's all set up. But the point is, I said to them when they were, when they were down there, he said, well, Jesus is going on a fucking new boat. He's going on a Dodge Diplomat with a final roof. Right? That's where it was. We pulled up in the parking lot. And they're looking up in the sky waiting for Jesus, right? He's like, fucking sitting there beside him. Looking up. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I'm really noticed is the empowerment of women is incredible. Oh, got to be. Mm. Oh, well, I predicted he, that. He always yeah. said that Amazing. W women will be yeah. running the world. Yeah. Once we cross over, yeah. because, women, because men have had their childhood, yeah. evil is manifest through men. Most, I always say that the, the women in Parliament and their position they get is dependent on the size of their bra. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. That's fair enough. It's okay. That's okay. <laughs> what room is she in, Double D? <laughs> you shouldn't be listening to this, you're too young. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it's just make it a bit of fun out of it. But it's all the, happening out there. It's, it's, it's inevitable. They, they, we are across the Milky Way galaxy. We're on the other side. They're too stupid. And, mm. and even if you look at this latest hurricane, right, it was already played out seven years ago. 1997 it was. So it's the New York one. Sandy. Sandy. Yeah, yeah, huh? They already had a speech made up for it and all that. Mm. The poor bastard's dead. Huh? Everything you see is all a bloody... Uh, uh, I said. Yeah, Joel said. 
they just said that people have been there and they go, this is not happening. No. Mm. Oh, that's not happening here. So, yeah, so that's what they do, they make believe. And then, well, the fashion do all that, like. Well, I mean, I exposed bloody 9 11 in about. The dust hadn't settled. I had it up on the internet. Mm. Now they did. It's the same day. Mm. And uh, everything else I've done. Moonwalk, I looked at this film. Who's this way to prove it? It's a light spectrum. Mm. It's mercury vapor. Put a meter on it. Mercury vapor. You know what mercury vapor is? That's the lamps they used at that time. Mm. They'd have a, a little pool of mercury and they'd heat it up and it would boil. And as the fumes come up, then it would arc at 700 volts DC. Yeah. And then it would kick off and yeah. then it would run on normal voltage once it's got a glow and heat up. Then it comes up with this glow. And it's not instantaneous on. It may be three or four seconds, five seconds before they actually can see. Well, that's mercury vapor. So you look at the studio lights, what they used, the only thing they had, they didn't have halogen, halogen, yeah. they had mercury vapor. You know, spectrograph, it'll tell you what colour the light is. And it ain't on the moon because that's got to be sunlight. Right? Not only that, <clears throat> The temperature on the moon is very uh, high and low in Fahrenheit. It's 555 degrees between the two. That's how many times where Christ is found in the New Testament. So they're supposed to be 10 hours on the surface, and it's 250 degrees in the sun. What, well, that's hotter than a stove over there? And they're in this. Well, when I went down to NASA, I had a close look at one of the uh, Apollo landers that they didn't do, Apollo 17, yeah. something like that. And it's got gold coloured foil on it. Yeah. Right? You could actually poke your finger. This is supposed to be a lunar commander. Yeah. Something very wrong here. And then to get out the hole with the backpack on, and they're supposed to get a Jeep out as well mm. later on later missions, I couldn't get through the damn hole without a backpack. <laughs> right? So they've either employed midgets. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is a, this is what they get up to. Look, well, they can do what they like. They can do it. Well, what well, I'm amazed is that most people, like, well, they say, oh, they wouldn't lie to us. Um. Eating GMO food and at least horn grown out the side yeah. of your head. It's, it's the most incredible thing Americans of the world at large for that matter. To be so damn stupid. Obama's going to bring it all together. Oh, now. <laughs> oh of course you yeah. yeah. He's up there going, you know, we had, you think we had change before? We're going to well, have change oh. now. <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, as I said, uh, he's probably dead. Um, if not, they can also electronically do these things where they have yeah. a person going through it and they'll mimic his voice and even his... It could be a, 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 a white man doing it. Why is there one of Albus that they... Images of Albus that Albus has ever performed and they've brought mm. together with modern technology back then, it could have been with 10 years ago, mm. sung one of the songs that he'd never released before. Right. And they generated an Albus to sing it. Just from right. what they had. Yeah, and... In yeah, the whole song. Man, it's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. Mm. Well, see, that, that, that probably was, longer than ten years ago. Mm. It was pretty, pretty convincing. That, the, the last, um, I mean, Project Bluebeam has been part of their, oh, the whole alien thing. And mm. Project Bluebeam would be to have their Messiah coming in the clouds, mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he would be. He would appeal to all religions around the world, and they, mm. would, would, they would see him and hear him speaking their language and all the rest of it. And anyway, that's supposed to be their matraya. Mm. Um, but it's all a holograph, all bullshit. So they don't really expect someone to come back and tell you to get stuffed, right? You're all going to hell. Yeah. They don't like that, no. <laughs> right? They're all going to hell, but they think they are. By the way, I'm speaking. Yeah. Well, people are living, a lot of people are living hell here now. Anyway. Well, that, well, exactly, because it's they're been made that way. Even when you get to talk to people, you mm. think that the thing you talk to people and they're just living hell. Well, the, the, it's been made that way. It's been, paradise mm. has been turned into hell. Why? Mm. Because of this demonic they control, mm. Jews who call themselves Jews and are not, and they have set out to rule the world. That's what Obama's their puppet. They have set out to, mm. they control. And it's the Jews in Israel, but they still are puppets because even behind the scenes there you've got Rothschild at the mm. very top, who is a Jew that calls himself yeah. Jew and is not. And then you've got the British royal family, all of them. So it's all, they own all the wealth. Mm. And then you've got the Jews doing all the, 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 the dirty things. Every single one of their synagogues throughout North America, when the families go there to worship, it's a meeting, a reporting meeting, on how are you coming along with your assignment, what, what destruction... They've all been assigned a certain amount of destruction mm. to undermine 
Western society. And see, that's another one of Hitler's um, revulsions that he learned when he was homeless in Vienna for five years and hunger was his constant companion. And he was looking how the Habsburgs were by now dominated by the Jews, how they were all living, and everybody around him is, doesn't have any work. So you reckon, not, give a man work, mm. everything's okay. Um, but it was the, it was, he found out that it was the Jews, Judaism, the Jews, who introduced pornography, the um, arts. It, by the time he came to power, the German people were beside themselves because they regarded themselves as a Christian nation, mm. you know, a morally upright but Christian nation. But didn't they have an ancient, that Hitler was involved with trying to resurrect the ancient? Hindu. Yeah. Mm, that's right. Area. Yeah. The ancient Hindu area. Well, he, he said he wanted to make it a, uh, a race, the Germans, mm. into a holy race. So, but, but did, that, did that stem from that ancient Christian-like belief well, he had a what problem with Christianity because of the above reasons, you know, the Paul yeah. and the Pauline epistles and all that kind of stuff. And then the Jews had dominated via taking over the Old Testament. He wasn't happy with that. Mm. But, but he did say that his, uh, the Nazarene was what mm. he was interested in. Well, well, what, what but, but was that connected with that ancient, for want of a better word? I think so. Yeah. Uh, it, because there's only no alternatives. Right. The, the oldest religion has got to be the truth one, isn't it? Yeah. It's true. Which it does. Now, when you read the opening pages of, of uh, Mein Kampf, then you really, within the first page, you're going, oh my God, you realise how this guy's been demonised. Because you cannot read somebody's writings. And it, 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 you know that they are good. Mm. The same as you can't help but read somebody's writings and you know that they're evil. Mm. Well, Hitler was a good man. Mm. Now, he, um, he was concerned for Germany. He could see the destruction that was coming to Germany. They had lost land in the Franco-German mm. war in the century before, and Germany was expanding. There were 52 million people, and they were running out of room. And his, his own experience was um, living in Austria, I mean, all these German people in Austria, and the Germans were scattered. He wanted to give them the umbrella of the fatherland or the, the, or the homeland. Mm. It didn't mean that, mean that they had to just give them that umbrella, if you like, one umbrella where they could all be German, speaking mm. German, and have the German connection and protection. Because um, they were there in, in uh, Vienna. His time in Vienna, was the, that was his learning curve. And he was there from 15 when both of his parents had died within a year of each other. He was on his own and homeless. Mm. And he had to support himself. So what he found, he didn't understand why the working man who was going starving because there was no work, mm. work one day, work not next, so it's the inconsistency of work and it drives people insane. Well, that's what's happening now. Everywhere. Exactly. Everywhere now. Okay. Everywhere. Well, the same reasons that it's happening now were the very same reasons that it was happening mm. then. And he, he got right into the source and he found the source to be the Jews. Judaism. He named it. He knocked it right on the head. He said the two greatest enemies for the future mm. of mankind, yeah. Judaism and Marxism, because Marxism is Judaism. And we're talking Zionism here. Yeah. And when he got to the roots of who owned what, who ran what, who was publishing what, it was all Jews. And that it's mm. set up in their protocols. Exactly they will the undermine. It's exactly, exactly the, the same. same. Everyone See, they, made, they made a huge mistake when they wrote the protocols, maybe 200 years old. Uh, we will forbid Christ. Mm. Right then, saying he's a man, he's coming back, and we're going to forbid him when he gets back here. That's stupid sad. They are saying, yes, he's a man, he's coming back, but we will forbid him. Mm. And they have. Mm. Publicly, because stupid. they are in the media. Yeah. Anything that we, you know, they clamp it down, you. Yeah. This is supposed to be the chosen, chosen race? I would have chosen to take the body. No, the, the crimes that they have committed, they now it's public knowledge in the USA mm. that they were behind 9 11. They were. They worked with the American government. They were both culpable, but it was Mossad doing it. Mm. Um, the USS Liberty, well, that was in the 60s, wasn't it? Mm. That was Mossad, that was Israel. Every act of terror, you know, where they're blaming the Muslim, no, it's been them mm. behind in cohorts with the CIA because they own America. The USA is Israel. Mm. 
Mm. They are Jews, all of them. The every position tribes, in the Senate, every position or rather a president, they're all Jews. Everyone. Yeah. Is yeah. there any resurgence in the great cars they made in the great seventies and eighties over there? Yeah. Well, I'd like to car the best of all. How many how many Jews can you get in a Volkswagen? Ones that you can work on yourself. Ones that you can work on yourself. How that many how many Jews can you fit in a Volkswagen? <laughs> <laughs> two in the front, two in the back, and fifty in an Astra. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Well, this <laughs> mate of mine, he was he was very compassionate. He said, "My father died in the horror camps. Right? He fell off one of the towers." <laughs> but he's gone. Now, that was Jerry's joke. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, and of course, now the truth is being revealed about the camps. Hmm. They weren't capable of burning anything more. You know, the, the amount of coking coal that they had for the entire amount of war was just enough to stoke the ovens to, to burn the occasional body. And, and I think the worst that they lost in one month was 10,000 due to typhoid. Mm. And uh, they were typhus. starving. Typhus. Typhus, yeah. And they were all starving. Now, the gas, the gassing chambers that talking about, that was to de lice them. Mm. That's been proven it now. And, of course, you've got the... The ones who that's why they cut the hair off because it'd come in the lice of the hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was an epidemic. Huh? Now, when mm. you see the photographs that people, there are a lot of Jews who are telling the truth as well, but they bring out the same old eight over and over and over. Yeah. The ones who are lying, paid to lie. One is actually an actor. Mm. He, as soon as he got out of the camp, he went straight into acting. Mm. Well, he's one of the ones that recycled. Mm. But there's a library of fifty thousand interviews by the Holocaust survivors, and a lot of them are telling the truth. They look back in fond memories. They they group together, some, you know, they make arrangements to go and, and have a reunion. Soccer teams, they had orchestras and, they, and their stage they, players they, and things to the kiddies. They had white tablecloths on the top, and they had theatre, whatever it was that was possible to give them. The Germans supplied them because they were. Hitler always referred to it as the German, pro, uh, the, sorry, the the Jewish problem, the Jewish problem, his Jewish problem. But it was separate to the war. The war was fighting the war, and he would deal with the Jewish problem at the end of the war. In the meantime, we'll put them all together in the camps, which was actually keeping them safe because Berlin, of course, had the, the, the crap bombed out yeah. of it. Dresden, that was the Holocaust and yeah. that was Churchill and yeah. the USA. So 125 people in 20 all of this information yeah. now is, is becoming available thanks to the internet. Yeah. And the six million that they're talking about, first of all, he, if there were six million um, more jobs that were created yeah. throughout this period. But back in the 20s, in uh, Jewish writings, they were talking about 6 million, 6 million, 6 million there. So they just switch it over. In the 70s, mm. it, it was a, a catchphrase in the 70s when they realised that it's for the reparations mm. racket by normal, Norman oh, Finkelstein, a mm. Jewish professor, who's probably the, he probably is the bravest one on the earth, speaking up the truth and saying it, it didn't happen. And there are many, many honourable Jewish people who are saying it just did not happen. It's, it's what Jews do. Mm. It's why they've been evicted out of 80 nations mm. for all of this time. Every nation that they have gone into, children disappear mm. because they are the ones taking them and sacrificing. They believe that life of the flesh is in the blood. They want the blood of especially Christian children because they believe that they're going to gain the benefit of mm. longer life by sucking the life out of mm. a, a, a white child. They get some merit from doing that. Mm. Lots of balls. And, and they, yeah, they do make work. So that's, so every nation experienced that. Once they expelled the Jews, the children were safe. That's what, that's why they have been evicted. So they can now of course they have to lie. It's all, it's all part of the Talmud. They must lie. They cheat. They destroy. They, they, they do everything to undermine the Goyim. That's mm. us. But it's the reverse. They are the Goy, the Gentile. We are the true Jewish people being of Judah. So, the royal, royal. Mm. Yeah. so anyway, it, it's, but now the world is waking up. They're so, and calling it for what it is, you know, kind of led the way, don't do you think we led the way? And call it, you know, the Jew Jew. Definitely, yeah. I said to everybody, you know, hello. Is there, I is there any money going to I've been worried about the money, you know, the, all the stuff we do. I've noticed no interest in my bank yeah, 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 yeah. Is, yeah. is a payday, yeah, is a payday yeah. going to come around pretty soon? Yeah. I'm, I'm, no worries. Hello. <laughs> We've got cars to run. Happy birthday, person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll turn you Well, we know that the things that they're doing is so horrible that uh, the earth cannot sustain the yes. rate of GMO poisoning, mm. the air, 
the uh, constant battles that they're trying to start, mm. the monetary undermining, the uh, usury they take, and they control everything. So Radiation, microwave. Yeah, look, I think doubt alone is, mass, is a weapon of mass destruction. Really? It's doubt. Who? who what? Doubt. 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 Oh, doubt, yes. Doubting. Do these things are so. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's how they get right. them. See, I don't expect anybody to go running up and down the street going mad. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I wouldn't do it. I've come up here to tell you. What's <laughs> happening here? The guys are rushing mad. That's not going to happen to you. Okay, well, that would be nice. Oh, dear. Throngs and hundreds of people coming through here. And, and um, it's driving mad. It's a good one. Autographs, you know, and people lying around here and oh. up camp and floating in boats out here. Well, we've had one from. There he is in the morning, gets up now for a stretch of the morning. 60 minutes. 60 minutes. on interviews. You wouldn't like it. Helicopters hovering over even more. We don't like AJ Miller's yeah, sort of scenario. <laughs> the White Rose. Well, I've said no. that, like, I'm enjoying what it is now. I don't want to go any further. No. Right? I'll just keep on sort of lobbing those logic things over the fence and hopefully they won't wake up. That's the way. <laughs> but I can't help myself, right? <laughs> Siggy time. Uh, All right. Can we have a Siggy break? Yeah, we're going to have to serve. I saw, I saw berries. berries coming out. Yeah, but